sitting next to me, not far away from me. <laughs> now, I remember this masjid. I used to come and lead the second Jummah prayers here years ago. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the opportunity to come again and say a few words about this month of Sha'ban in front of the same audience that I had years ago. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Now this is the month, <coughs> as you all know, a very blessed month. And if I have to conclude this month in one word, just one word, the Prophet Sallallahu has called this month Sha'ban Shahri. The Prophet ﷺ has called this month his own month. This is my month, the Prophet ﷺ has said. So whatever the Prophet ﷺ has specified for being his own, what blessed is that month going to be? So it's a very blessed month, Alhamdulillah. We are once again gathered in the masjid. We have left, left our houses to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His beloved Habib Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have heard Tilawat of the Holy Quran in beautiful voices. You have heard the blessed praise of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in beautiful voices. Obviously I am not speaking in tune. It's going to be clear English. Hopefully, inshallah, you will enjoy what I say and I will enjoy your response. The Prophet وسلم, was asked by Hazrat Ibrahim السلام, about this month. That do you know what night comes in this month? Rasulullah said, that you tell me. It is not because Rasulullah did not know, but it was because Rasulullah wanted Hazrat Jibra'il to mention it so we know today. And Hazrat Jibra'il said, This is the month when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, equivalent to the goats of the tribe of Bani Kalb. Now Bani Kalb was a very big tribe and it had the most goats. They used to look after the most goats in that tribe. The Prophet Hazrat Jibreel said to the Prophet وسلم, equivalent to the hair of the goats of the tribe of Bani Kalb. That's how many people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees from the fire of Jahannam at this time. <laughs> now if I had to show you a finger, a small finger, let's count. I've got few hairs in my finger. I can't count them. If I try counting them, I will still miss a few out. So just imagine how many hair a goat has. And not just one goat, but thousands goats, the tribe that had the most goats. So imagine how many people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tonight frees from the fire of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us 
amongst those people he frees from the fire of punishment. Now, from Islamic day, it starts from Maghrib Salah. As soon as Maghrib has been prayed, the day starts. Obviously, in the Islam, in the in our calendar, British calendar, we have the day first, then we have the night. But in Islamically, we have the night first and then the day. So after Salatul Maghrib today, the night of 15th Shaaban will start. The night of Barakah, Laylatul Mubarakah. The night in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers His mercy upon the Mu'mineen, upon those who believe. And it's the night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this is the night in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy <coughs> is in his peak. Now one question, when we are given freebies, when, we, when someone says to you that I will give you something free, come and take it. Don't we run for that thing? We will do it. We will say we want to be the first person so we can grab the best thing out of that set free. Tonight is the night of freebies. But tonight we do not run for what a human gives us in free. Tonight we run to the mercy of Allah. Because tonight is the night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that tonight is for you, Lord. Ask me whatever you want and I will give you. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in his peak. He's saying, is there those, anyone in this dunya that asks for forgiveness? So tonight I will forgive them. Is there anyone in this dunya that asks for wealth, sustenance, that tonight I will give it to them? Come away after freebies. We love freebies. But freebies we are given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So tonight is the night we should run towards the mercy of Allah. That Ya Allah, we want this, give it to us. Ask for health, wealth. Ask for your maghfirah. Count us amongst those that you forgive tonight. Ask for whatever that is good. And one thing I say, everyone has this mind that whatever I will ask for, Allah will give me tonight. Now you ask for a Ferrari or a Bugatti, come on, we can't afford that. But Allah will only give you tonight what is best for you. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you will be able to handle, you will be given that tonight. You need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is our duty to ask and leave the giving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But one downfall, one thing, Tonight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives a lot of people, frees a lot of people from the fire of Jahannam, apart from a few individuals. Now I will count a few which is mentioned in the hadith. The first person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive on the month of the 15th of Shaaban is that person that does shirk. What does shirk mean? Today, nowadays, whatever you say is a shirk. This is shirk. That is shirk. Shirk means to associate anyone or anything as God. Or as someone that you should worship apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person that is the shirk, remember Allah is the creator. We are the creation. Allah is the person that gives. We are the people that take. Whatever we have got, the ability that we have got today, our Iman should be Allah has given us that ability to do that thing. Allah is the giver and we are the takers. So the person that associates anyone as God, or anyone as a form of worship, apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not forgiven in the night of Shaban. Second, is alcoholics. 
Those that intoxicate themselves. Those that become high. You know they say that, I say I'm high. Those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you know we should look amongst ourselves. That are we amongst those people? If we are, then tonight is the night of repentance. Ask for forgiveness. Those people that intoxicate themselves, which includes cannabis, drugs, beer, white, cocaine, heroin, alcohol, anything that intoxicates a person, that makes that person not know what he's doing. That person, until he does not ask for forgiveness, is not forgiven on the night of 15 Shaban. After that is the person that has hatred amongst another Muslim. You know, we all hate people. That is amongst ourselves. If we don't hate someone, we are not humans. That's the way we take it. I don't like you. I have hatred amongst you. I have this. But a Muslim heart should not have hatred amongst another Muslim. We are all brothers. And we are all from one father. We should all love one another. And we should love to forgive one another. And the person that has hatred amongst another Muslim. Until he does not do, does not do tawbah to that person. And then to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not forgiven in this night. After that. A person that is disrespectful to their parents. A very big thing here. You know today we say that they are still living in the old century. And they've come from India, Pakistan, where we live in England. Yeah, but that is not whatever your parents. Yes, if your parents are taking you away from the deen, it is still not permissible for a person to disrespect them. You cannot listen to them when they are taking or when they are telling you something against Islam. But even then, for being your parents, you have to respect them. And the person that disrespects his parents is not forgiven on the night of Shaban, on the night of 15th of night. Now there are various other people. The hadith mentions a lot of people. And if we look into ourselves, we will either account ourselves one of them. One of them reasons the Prophet ﷺ has given, we are amongst them. But tonight is the night where we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Tonight is the night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling for us to ask Him for forgiveness. And remember, Allah loves that person that asks him for forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِمُونَ And all of you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you become successful. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِمُونَ So that you become successful. Now repentance is a very easy thing. You know when we ask someone else for repentance, we say, sorry, Ar. And that's it. We say, yeah, he's, you, should, it, you need to be a man to say sorry to a person. And when we say sorry, yeah, I forgive you. But sorry does not mean nothing. Because when you say sorry to a person, you will end up doing that same mistake to another person. But what does Tawbah mean? The true repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will not do that sin again. That is called forgiveness. That is called Tawbah. When you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, be ashamed of doing what you have done, and then promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will not 
repeat that sin again, that is Tawbah. And, you know, when someone does a very small mistake, when someone makes a very small mistake, we say, I forgive him now. It's a minor mistake, so I forgive him. You know, when we are going for our employers, and we've made a small mistake, we say, Chala, don't do it again, I forgive you. That is the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes. But no comparison when we as Muslims make minor mistakes. Allah Ghafoor Rahim forgives that mistake without us even asking. He thinks, Chala, he has made this mistake, I let it go. But when we make major mistakes, that is when Tawbah comes into action. That is when we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. What happens? You make a big mistake, you get sacked. Your employer says you've made a massive mistake, but I don't need you anymore. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not sack you, but He gives you an opportunity. If you make a mistake in, to, to, in this dunya, if you're in front of a judge and you say, Judge Saab, please forgive me. I have made this mistake. And you cry in front of the judge. What will people around you do? They will say, look at him, man. He's made the mistake. They will laugh at you. Now he's crying. Now he's asking for forgiveness. He should have thought about it before making that mistake. But the barga, the court of Allah is not like that. The court of Allah is if you shower your tears in front of him, Allah says, my banda has been crying. My banda is asking me for true forgiveness, I forgive him. At the time of Hazrat Musa you must have heard this before, if not we hear it again. There was a very sinful person, one person that was very sinful. Obviously, within a class, if there's one troublemaker, he says he's, he's making the whole class become in trouble. Yeah? When one person at the time of Hazrat Musa, he was so sinful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Hazrat Musa that if this person stays within you, then I will shower my punishment within your whole village. How sinful was this person? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is making the whole village dirty for his sins. So if this person stays within the village, then I will shower my punishment in that village. So what did Hazrat Musa salam do? Looked for this person, found this person and chucked him out of the village. Now when he was chucked out of the village, the people of the city found out. So the people of the city chucked him out. Now, not being accepted anywhere, he went to the mountains. A cave in the mountain. He started living there. And while he was living, he became very ill. Now is the time. He raised his hands. He showered the tears. And he said, Ya Allah, I have been very sinful. I have not done anything in my life apart from commit sin. My heart is probably blackened with sins. But you are the fool of Rahim, Ya Allah. You listen to those that call to you. Ya Allah, I am asking for true forgiveness. Forgive me. He carried on crying. He carried on crying until his soul was taken. <coughs> now this person was a very sinful person in the village. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders Hazrat Musa alayhi salam that go to so and so mountains and at so and so cave there's a very pious person of mine. Go there and prepare to bury him and bury that person. Now Hazrat Musa salam went to that place and sees that same person who Hazrat Musa salam chucked out the village. 
अरे ये तो वही बंदा है दिस इज दर्सन आई चक आउट now allah has given me a order to go and bury him prepare for his burial so hazrat musa alaihi salam asked allah ya allah what is this this is the person that you were going to shower the whole punishment in the whole village for now you have told me you have ordered me to bury this person and to prepare his burial Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said yes right this is that same person but this person done truth over this person asked for true repentance so this person not only that i have forgiven his sins but all his sins i have turned into rewards so as he had so many sins now he has become a pious person of mine with so many rewards so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy you can know never underestimate the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tonight is the night when it's in its peak he's asking for people is there anyone that is asking for me is there anyone is that is asking for something so i could give it to him now the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said the person that does true tawbah true repentance is as if that person was born today without any sin atta'u min al-dhanbi kama la dhanbala true tawbah is as if that person has been born today without any sin and let me tell you when this hadith was said was mentioned by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was a companion called Ma'ir Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sat in a gathering of companions now this companion called Ma'ir came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam crying he was crying so much Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him the Ma'ir what is wrong with you Why are you crying? He said, "Ya Rasulullah, I have committed a very big sin. I have committed such a sin that if I have to tell you, I have not got the guts to tell you." So the companions that were gathered around surrounded the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, persuaded him. "Why is what have you committed? Tell me what have you done?" He has said, "I have done wrong to another woman. I have committed adultery." As soon as Ma'ir said this, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam turned his face. He said, "I have not got space for people like you in my barga." So Ma'ir came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for intercession. He knew that if I had to go to anyone for forgiveness, to intercede for me, to ask Allah for, to forgive me, it can't be either than anyone than the Bar Allah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's where we say, "What we'll see that comes into place?" So my is when Ya Rasulullah, if you do not ask for my forgiveness, then where else am I going to go? If I cannot come to you and you are turning your face then where else am I going to go to It is your barga that people come to us so you could ask Allah to forgive us Remember that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a mediation All the awliya kiram and the anbiya kiram that we use as wasila is a mediation are the middle people that are closer to Allah so we tell them to ask Allah to forgive us we cannot directly say to us to awliya kiram or the anbiya kiram that you forgive us they are a mediation they are asked to for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are asked to pray to Allah so Allah forgives us so that's why ma'iz went to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the person that is closest to Allah. 
at that time, obviously, in Islam, committing adultery is a very big sin. And the, for the punishment for it is to chuck stones at you until you die. So Rasulullah ordered the companions that punish Ma'il according to the way of Islam for committing adultery. Now the companions took him to a mountain and used that way of punishment. But the only word that Ma'il was uttering from his mouth was Ya Rasulullah, forgive me. Ya Rasulullah, forgive me. That was the only words. While being pelted with stones, he was calling for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he was pelted with stones until his soul left his body. When the companions went back to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they asked. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the companions that when you were pelting Ma'id what was his reaction? What was he saying? How was he reacting? Companions said when we were pelting him he was calling you Ya Rasulullah The only words that he was saying that Ya Rasulullah Ya Rasulullah, I have committed this sin, forgive me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had tears in his eyes. And he said to the companions that when Ma'iz was calling me, when Ma'iz was calling upon me, why didn't you leave him alone? Promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ma'iz has repented in such a way that not Allah, not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven his sins, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the true repentance of Ma'iz, forgiven the sins of everyone living in Makkah. True repentance, true tawbah. You know when one intends to do tawbah? You know when we intend to do bad, the angel that writes down the bad deeds does not write it down until we do that bad deed. But when we intend to do something good, as soon as we have intended in our, in our good books, the angel starts his writing. Just the intention, just the thought in your mind of doing good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angel starts writing the goods. Now tonight is a night where our reports are placed in the bargah, in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously even at work, I don't know if your workplace has it, but where I work, we have a yearly report that our duty manager has to give that report to our station manager. And this person has done this thing good, this person has done this thing good, he's done this thing bad. And with that report, if it's good, we get a pay rise. If it's not good, we stay where we are. Tonight is the night when our yearly report is placed in the bargah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in our work reports, we could sweet talk our managers. We could say, oh, I yes, give you a good report and come on man, I'll bring you food tomorrow. But we can't do that. Our reports with it, that are placed in the bargah of Allah cannot be forged. Whatever we have done, Throughout the last year, that is what's going to be placed in the bargah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at the report and He will say, Is this person is this person liable for a pay rise? Can I give this person a pay rise? And Allah's pay rise 
It's the pay rise that we are being created for. To, to gain a 